Hi all, welcome. Ankle Mulman here. This is part 10 in the teaching about righteousness. Our website is www.cwowi.eu. Last time I talked a little bit about the law and about faith, about grace. And today I would give this a title from religion to relation. And I want to talk a little bit about Abraham because Abraham is called in the New Testament the father of our faith. And he is the only one in the Old Testament that God says, he, I, I call Abraham my friend. Not even Moses, not even Adam, not even, well, call all, name all of the, 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 yeah, the people you know in the Old Testament. But Abraham was called a friend of God. And why is that? Why is he called the father of our faith? Well, you have to know a little bit about Abraham, about where he grew up. He grew up, the Bible says, he came from Ur of the Chaldees in Mesopotamia. That's what Acts 7, 2 says, and actually that is uh, modern Iraq. Um, Ur was a capital city. It was the home of the moon cult. It was dedicated to worshiping the moon. So Abraham grew up in the area that was known for worshiping other gods. And not only the moon god, but also the stars and other gods, because they were dependent on the seasons, on when to plant, when to harvest, what to do. So they made sacrifices to different gods if they wanted a certain result. So if they wanted, for, for instance, a very good crop, they need to uh, um, sacrifice to a certain god, so they were sure that their harvest would be plenty or if they needed extra lambs, a lot of lambs, there was another god they had to, uh, to, to sacrifice to, to get the result that they wanted. So actually, a religion, you could say, or a false religion, is the basis and the foundation of a false religion, is trying to manipulate God. They try to manipulate the gods. When I do this, the gods have to respond in a certain way. When I give this or when I give that, then the gods have to do this. So that was the, the, the area and that was the faith and the religion that Abraham grew up in. And then God says in Genesis 12, 1, I want you to go out of your country, out of your father's house and go to where I send you. So God took him out. And nowadays I see that a lot of the God is uh, taking people out of those religious tradition of doing a certain kind of thing and expecting God to do whatever. You know, if I do A, God has to do B, you know. So actually we are manipulating God, although we won't call it that way. And actually we never thought about manipulating God, but in, in a sense we do. You know, have you ever heard of uh, uh, giving a seed? Have you never need give a seed? Or the hundredfold return? Or um, uh, claim it, name it and claim it? All things that you do, all those things are actually based on manipulating God. And that is very wrong because God is not to be manipulated. We can't manipulate God. He is above every manipulation. He is above every other God. He is not like the gods in Abraham's time. So why did God take Abraham out of those traditions, out of the religion, out of the manipulating the gods? Because he wanted a relationship with him. So sometimes you have to get out of those things and then you really have to know God. Imagine Abraham, he came out of it. How did he know what to do? How did he know what to worship, how to worship? There was no Old Testament. There was only the law of Moses, but God took him out of it. So. You know, there was no New Testament. We go to the New Testament, but Abraham didn't have that. He only had God. So he had to, to, uh, to, to have a relationship, start a relationship with God. He had to get to know him. So when, Abraham, when God uh, spoke to Abraham many years later and he said, I want to give you a son, not many years later, but okay, he said, I want to give you a son, which was their greatest desire, and they never thought they could have a son. Then Abraham had to trust God and he had to believe if God is to be trusted. How can you trust a person when you know a person? And knowing a person comes when you start to walk with him and start to talk with him and get to know that person. So that is why God, he wanted to give them so much and he wanted to Abraham to be like a father of the faith so that we, have, uh, we could go back to Abraham and, and say, see, 
God doesn't want us to have to do religious traditions and to do works and to manipulate him, but he wants us to have, us to have a relationship with, with him. But if God wanted a relationship, you could say, why did he give the, Mo the, the, the commandment 613 laws to Moses? Well, that is a very good question. What was the reason of the law? Because there had to be a, re a reason for it. You know, the rituals God gave to Moses, do this, um, how to treat others, what to eat, what not to eat, how to approach God, and so on. In Romans 3, 19, I hope you have a Bible because I'm going to read a lot of scriptures. Romans 3, 19 says, we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and the world may become guilty before God. So the law was there so everyone would become guilty for God. How, what do you mean guilty for God? Well, 613 laws. How can you ever keep all those 630? You know, when you do your best, like on, on, on a Monday, you think I'm doing pretty good. I'm now already, I have fulfilled like 500 commandments and then 501 you missed. Oh no, no, you can start all over again. And James even says in James 2 verse 10 says, whoever shall keep the whole law and stumble in one point, he's guilty of all. Wow, man, that is... That is very mean, you know, that is difficult. How can one ever keep the whole law? And that was exactly the purpose of the law, so that people would become guilty before God, so that they knew that they needed a savior. And Galatians says that the law was added, Galatians 3.19, because of transgression till the seed should come. So the law, till the seed, Jesus should come. So the law was... Uh, the purpose of the law was from Moses till Jesus, and it sort of filled a void. It helped the people to live as good as possible because they were not righteous on the inside. They didn't know what was sin. They didn't know what to do and what not to do, so they did whatever they wanted to do. They didn't know that lying was wrong. They didn't know that stealing was wrong or murdering or coveting your, your neighbor's husband or wife. No. So the, God had to give them a law and tell them what not to do, so that they knew that when they lied, that it was wrong, that it was sinful. The Amplified Bible says that the law was added to disclose and expose to men their guilt because of transgression and to make them more conscious of the sinfulness of sin. So people did sin, but they didn't know that they sinned until God told them that they were sinning. And Romans 5, 13 and 14 says, sin is not imputed when there is no law. With other, uh, you could say it like this, in the 70s, for instance, when we had our oldest kids, when they, they were small and we went in the car, there was no law that says you are, um, um, there is a law that you have to buckle up in the car. No, there was no such law. So, did we buckle up in the car? No, we did not. Did we have our, our children, do we have uh, uh, seats for the children? No, we did not. They just sit, sit in, the, in the back of the car. Was it, uh, was it sinful if the policeman came, could he give us a fine? No, because there was no law saying that we were guilty if we did not do that. But then there came a law because of safety, of course, you know that. And the law said, now, if when there is a seatbelt in your car, you have to buckle up and use your seatbelt. If you don't do that, you will get a fine. So now, if we don't use our seatbelts, for instance, you know you are guilty because there is a law. So that goes for so many things. So the law was there to show people their sinfulness. And what Romans says, by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law made men aware that they could never keep the law and that they needed help, that they needed a savior. Galatians 3.21 even says, if there was a law, there is no law given which could have given life. If there would be such a law, then life would have come. Uh, by the law, but there was no such law that could give life. Think about the rich young ruler in Mark 10. He says, what shall I do? What shall I do that I may it, uh, in, inherit eternal life? Because religion had told him, you have to do certain things, then you will inherit eternal life. And of course, he trusted his own good works because Jesus said, do this and do that. And he said, yes, I've done all these things. But the Lord then, uh, Jesus said, well, go and sell everything that you have. And he was, he became very sad because he was very rich. And he didn't know, he didn't know that actually uh, his money was a God, you know, that he loved his money more than he loved the Lord. 
So what does the law do? It makes us sin conscious. And then it says in Romans 3, 21 and 22 that the righteousness of God is revealed now apart from the Lord. It has nothing to do with our works or with our deeds. And it says it's through faith, freely by his grace. And Romans 11, 6 says, and if it is by grace, then it is no longer by works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. So it's not a combination. We are saved by grace, but our Christian life, we should do works. We should try to manipulate God and, and, and do all those religious things. You know, I want you to think about it uh, the next coming week. How do you know God? Do you know God by your, your religious traditions, by the things you do, by your good works, by your actions? Do you feel good about yourself if you go to church every Sunday or the Bible, Bible study or whatever? What would happen? What do you, would you think about yourself and your, uh, your faith if you would leave all those things behind like Abraham did? If you want to, would not go to church anymore? If you don't read the one chapter in the Bible every day? If you, if you just leave those things, what would you think about yourself? Do you still, still think that God loves you? Are you able to walk with him? Are you able to walk out of tradition and of religion to a relationship with God? That's my question for you this week. See you next week.